Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Who? Okay, let me just, oh yeah, we clap it up. Let me just see, who loves a good food truck? Man, let me tell you, you can put anything smoke covered, you can dip it in butter, put it on four wheels, and let me stand in line for 20 minutes and pay more money than I should, and I'm going to eat it. I love it. Man, I'm so looking forward to having fun and having a good time with each and every one of you. But hey, if you're new here, my name's Rob. We're in a series called Uncover. We're in part three of this series. And right now we stream our service. And I, can we, we like to do this. There's a lot of people. A lot, I know there's a lot of people in the room. There's a lot of people watching online. We'd like to just welcome them, everybody. Give them a... Hello, hello. How's it going? If you want to find out our service, you can go to Facebook. You can type in Foundation Church Sepulpa, and that's where we're at. If you're here today and you're part of us, we'd love for you to share the service and get the Word of God out onto Facebook. Because let me tell you, people need some good news, right? Yes. All right. Hey, let's dive into this. We're in part three. And if you're joining us for the first time, we've been talking about the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they've been telling the story of Jesus from different perspectives. And you might think you've got four different books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And they're going to tell different parts of the story. Well, maybe you're thinking maybe one's right, one's wrong. No, 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 no. They're, they're all right. They're all correct. They're all inspired by God. God's the author. He used these men. But when you get four different people together, you're going to get four different sets of details, right? It's kind of like if I went and I had guys night, and I wanted to hang out with the guys, and we said, hey, let's go to a steakhouse. So we picked Ruth Chris, and then we said we're going to throw axes because that's what men do. We like to throw things. And then we had a good time. And then we come back to our wives, and what does our wife say when you come home? Well, how was it? Tell me all about it. They're just, they're just like, tell me. I'm just so excited. I want to know what. Tell me what you did. And we're like, well, one guy might say, I didn't like the steak. Who likes Ruth Chris? The steak was just way too hot. Well, the other buddy might say, no, 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 you don't understand. The thing came out sizzling like it was dead and it's sizzling and you could smell it and you could taste the mushrooms and it was just amazing. We got to go back next week. And then another one will probably be like, yeah, Rob told some joke and it was awkward. <laughs> it was bad. But then another buddy would be like, no, 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 it was so funny. It was so great. Classic Rob. It was, oh, it was so great. And then another buddy's like, no, you don't understand. I decided just to eat all the bread because I didn't know what to do because it was so awkward. <laughs> and then we get to throwing axes. And they're like, the wife's like, well, who won? This guy. This guy won. I won. But do you think they're going to admit it? Absolutely not. No. One guy said that he won. He didn't even keep score. And then the other buddy's like, well, you know, the axes, they weren't up to par. They weren't up to standard. They weren't sharp enough. The handle was bent and crooked. Should have brought my own axe. <laughs> Who brings their own axe? Don't raise your hand because I bet there's some of you like, absolutely, Rob. Got it in the truck. You want to go look at it? No. It's okay. And then one guy who actually came the closest to the bullseye forgot to tell his wife that detail. Now, who was right? Who was wrong? Because when we all get together, the wives start to talk. Well, did you hear about date night? The whole story starts to make sense. Because you hear from all different perspectives. Just like the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They tell all the story of Jesus. And that's what the Gospels are. And today I want to look at a story. It's found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's found in all of the Gospels. And they tell the same story with just a few different details. And the story is called The Last Supper. And maybe you're thinking, you're like, oh, Last Supper. You're thinking of a painting, right? Maybe we'll have a picture of the painting right here. Who's ever seen this picture of this, right? Oh, yeah, it's familiar to us. You're like, oh, it's The Last Supper. Did you know back in Jesus' day... They didn't call it the Last Supper. Mm -mm, no. Could you imagine Jesus? He's doing his thing. Hey, Peter, it's time to get ready for the Last Supper. And Peter pops up like a gopher, like, what? La Jesus, we just got here. What are you talking about? Last. It's the Last Supper. See, they didn't call it the Last Supper. They called it the Passover meal. And it's found in Luke 22. So if you've got your Bibles, you've got your phones out, go ahead and get your phone out. Go ahead and get your Bible out. If you're watching online, we're going to be in Luke 22. We're in Luke 22. And let's just look at this. It says, Jesus sent Peter and John ahead of them. Go and prepare the Passover meal so we can eat it together. We'll stop there and let's just talk about it for a second. The Passover meal means a couple of different things. First, it's a week-long party of remembrance. It's of remembrance because it's the Jews were delivered out of Egypt. 
If you maybe heard the story in the Old Testament, Exodus, or maybe you've seen the movie, The, the Ten Commandments. Remember Charlton Heston? Let my people go. Like that kind of Charlton Heston? It's found, in, it's okay to laugh, guys. We're just, we gotta loosen it up. I'm just letting you in on a little secret. There's a truck out there, and all they do is make fries, and they cover it with cholesterol. So it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's, uh, some people are like, I can't wait to give me some of that. So you've got, it's called deliverance. The Jews were delivered out of Egypt. God sent the angel, the Passover angel, to free his people because the Egyptians were abusing his children. It's called Passover. It passed over the Israelites because he sent the angel of death to come through. And the Israelites would paint blood on their doorsteps. They'd take the lamb and they paint the blood over the doorsteps. And the angel would pass over them. No blood, no Passover, even if you're an Israelite. So then you go back to Luke 22. Look at what Peter and John are doing. They're standing there, they've got the lamb, and they're headed to the temple. And there were hundreds. There were hundreds and hundreds of people there. And they would line up, and they would take their lamb, and they would present it to the priest. The priest would then bless it. They would kill it. They would drain all the blood out of it. Then they would stick it on some sort of spick and roast it. Imagine that scene at the temple. For me, it's like you go to a barbecue competition. Anybody ever been to those? Oh, yeah, those are good. You walk in there and your nose just jumps off because it's just, you're just too much for your nose to handle all the delicious goodness, all the different meats. Imagine that, Peter and John, all those lambs cooking. And then it leads to verse 14. Look at verse 14. It says, when the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat the Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I will not eat this meal again until the meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. See, for Jesus, this is the Last Supper. But for the disciples... For you, for me, we can think of this as the first supper. Think about this. All Christians throughout time have been using the basis of this meal as the Lord's Supper. Maybe you know the Lord's Supper as the cracker and the juice. Maybe you know it as communion. Maybe you're like, what are these little cups? That's the Lord's Supper. First tab you pull off, it's got the cracker. The other tab has the juice. Maybe you've been to a Catholic church and you've seen the Catholic priest with the wafer and the goblet of wine. Maybe you grew up in a church where they used those little silver dishes and those tiny, tiny little cups. Remember those little tiny cups? Oh, yeah, I remember, I remember as a kid. Oh, man, we thought we hit gold with those tiny little cups. We'd have stacks of them. And we'd tell them, oh, we're going to use these to drink out of them. And like, I don't think you understand. And they had these little cups and then the little pieces of bread. It's the Lord's Supper. And maybe you're just like, time out, Rob. This doesn't make sense. What's this all about? Well, let me tell you what it's all about. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 says this. It says, Jesus told us, do this to remember me. Can we all say that out loud? Do this to remember me. Do this to remember me. What this meal means, this helps us remember what Jesus did for his followers. So then it goes down to 19. Look at 19. It said, and then he took some bread and he gave thanks to it. And then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this is the cup of the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. In the few moments we have together, I would like to walk through this meal with you because there's meaning behind the meal. And the first thing, if you look deeper as you read Luke 22, you find out there was more than one cup, right? 
So many times I've studied this passage in Luke 22 and the Lord's Supper and performed the Lord's Supper and looking through all the different Gospels. You look at sacrament and what it means. And you take a deeper look at it and there was more than one cup. And probably, actually, there were four cups. And if you look at the law of Moses and you look at how God explains Passover and the Lord's Supper. So I invite you to go to the Old Testament. Go to the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 6. Verse 6. It says, Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am your Lord. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will free you from being a slave to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm, with a mighty axe of judgment. And I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptian. So at Passover, they're sitting at the table, and it comes time to drink the cup. They would read from this passage, and each time these I wills, that's God's proclaim. The I wills are God's proclaim, and they bless one cup and then drink from it. Each cup would represent a different aspect of God's work in your life. Here's what I mean by that. Think back to the I wills. I will bring you out. I'll free you. I'll redeem you. I'll take you as my own. I can get behind that. These I wills of God, that's the whole point of salvation right there. The four I wills. Maybe you're like, Rob, what is salvation? I I don't know what you're talking about. Salvation. Or maybe you've heard it as Jesus saves. You're like, oh, Jesus saves. You've seen it on social media or you've seen the shirt. You're like, Jesus saves? What's that? Is Jesus at Walmart clipping coupons looking for a good deal? No, no, no. That's not what it means at all. Jesus saves means he saves you. He saves me for what he did on the cross. Next week when we celebrate Easter, we celebrate the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. That's what it means, Jesus save. And I I want you to get your handouts out if you're taking notes. And why do we ask you to take notes? It's not because, oh, I've got something great to say. No, because literally this is God's word we're going to write down. And I know when Monday happens or Wednesday happens or Thursday happens and when it hits the fan, you can go back. Not to what I said. You can go back to the source. You can go back to God's word, and you can pull on God's word for your life. Because so many times we look for other things on social media and YouTube and friends and family, and we forget right here God's word is for you. So the first thing I want you to write down is this. It says, I will bring you out. I will bring you out. I will bring you out of your past. Whatever problem maybe you've fallen into or someone else has helped you into that problem, he will deliver you from it. Colossians 1.13 says, he will rescue you from the kingdom of darkness. And if your past is dark, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He'll rescue you from it, the scripture says. See, there's a real enemy There's a real enemy out there that wants to keep you right where you are. He doesn't want you to move forward, left, right. He wants to keep you right here for the choices you've made. But God's word says what? No, no, no. He will rescue you. He'll deliver you. He will rescue you. You're not defined by your past. You're not. You're destined by God's future for you. If you could go back in my life with all the hundreds of kids that we have in our preschool and kids ministry right now, I've been kicked out of every single preschool class. I go home to my parents' church and they're like, oh, he's a preacher? Wow. If the classroom didn't have concrete walls, it ain't gonna last. That does not define me as a kid. In college, the only thing I had on my mind was hello, ladies. 
if I brought my laptop up here from college, it would shut down the internet. Not because I'm proud of it, because I was acting like a lost person. But those do not define me. That's not who Rob Dunning is today, tomorrow, the future. The first thing I want you to write down is he'll bring you out of that. He will. Look at the next thing I want you to write down. It says, I will free you. He frees you from your sin. Not only when you accept Jesus, he cleans the slate, but then he paves the way for you. He frees you. So many times we feel like we're trapped in our sin. I do. You're like, you're a preacher, you shouldn't. No, I'm a human being. And we feel trapped in our sin. And we just cannot sin. It's like when I go to work, and my goodness, this one person in my work, they're just so annoying, and I'm just jealous because oh, they got the better stapler, and they got the better shoes, and oh, they're, they got the better lunch, and I'm eating the tuna sandwich. And then the, the person next to me gets the promotion. I work for that. That's my promotion, but they got it. And then you had to go talk to the boss, and you're like, oh, no, and just... Whew. Oh, is it just me who feels this way? I'm sorry. This is too real. Wow. Yeah. And you're stuck in this cycle. And I can't get ahead no matter what I do. I try to pull myself up. I try to make better choices. I try to do this and this and this. You can't free yourself. You can't. I can't. Jesus can't. I can't free myself from my addiction. No, you can't. But I can tell you story after story after story. Oh, when you put your eyes on Jesus, can I get an amen on this? Jesus can free you from your addiction. He can. This half of this church is resurrected marriages because not because we did it. Jesus did it. He'll free you. You get in a bind financially. It's not your money. You start saying, all right, God, what do you want me to do with what you bless me? Whatever, it's a little, a lot, non-existent. He'll change you. He just blesses left and right, left and right. I, I can tell you story after story after story until you're like, that can't be true. Yes, it is true when Jesus comes in. He changes everything. The third thing I want you to write down is this. It says, I will redeem you. That means he paid the price for you. Romans 3, 23 says this. We've all sinned, all of us. We're all sinners. 6, 23 says the penalty for sin is death. It's death. But Jesus on the cross, he paid that penalty for you, for me, if you're watching online. He paid that penalty for you. Last week, I got a ticket. Going down this road that shouldn't be 40 miles an hour, but it's 40 miles an hour. And these are confessions, but you know it's a bad road when I've called the civil engineer company who built the road. And it's 40 miles an hour because it's got a sidewalk on it. And I go into my house, and my wife, she's awesome, she's beautiful, she's amazing. Oh, she's an angel, I love her to death. And I go, honey... I got another ticket. <laughs> it's funny now. And my wife doesn't sound like this, but in my head, I, I feel like she turns into Roz from Monsters, Inc. and goes, how much was it, Rob? I just, in my mind, that's what I'm waiting to, to around the corner. It, she, she's beautiful, but she doesn't look like Roz. But I don't know. It's not my fault. This foot's bigger than this foot. It's been my whole problem. And then when you get the ticket, what do you call? The number to find out how much you have to pay. Oh, well, tickets went up. Okay, I understand. <laughs> the penalty for sin? Death. It's death. And I, 
you don't know me and I don't know you and maybe you got all your stuff together and you think you've got it all right and you're doing all the things. You don't have enough to pay that debt. You don't. You don't. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how your life is, how your career are, how great your kids are or aren't. You don't have enough. I don't have enough. Jesus paid your debt. He paid your debt. See, the penalty of sin is death. It's too much for you and me. But Jesus can pay it. The last thing I want you to write down is this. He said, I will take you as my own. I'll take you as my own. You can be part of the family when you believe. You're chosen by him. You're chosen. You belong to him. No matter what dead thing is lying in your past that you just keep dragging along because you think that defines you. No, no, no. You're chosen by him. And you have a new life. Jesus Christ died for you. And he rose for you to give you a new life. Not an okay life, a so-so life, but a brand new life. But there are so many believers, we're not walking in a new life. We're walking in by what our past defines us. But when Christ is inside of you, you have a new life. So at this meal, you've got Jesus and all the disciples. He hasn't been arrested yet. He hasn't been tried. He hasn't been crucified, dead, raised again, and he's telling all of his followers, he's saying, hey, this is what's about to happen. I can't imagine. I bet Peter's going, tell him, now I know why it's the Last Supper. And then you've got Peter and John. They went to the temple. They took the lamb. Why did they take a lamb? It's not because they like lamb. No, who likes lamb? For Thanksgiving, we eat ham, turkey, ribs, all kinds of good stuff. But they took the lamb as a sacrifice. It was a sacrifice. A sacrifice means it stands in for you, for me. And each year they would take a lamb and they would have it killed because they know sin leads to death. So each year they'd have to take a lamb as a sacrifice for them. But one lamb couldn't cover all their sins. And then Jesus came. Jesus came. He was the one man that answered all sacrifices. Forever. So then when you look at the Lord's Supper, the cracker and the juice, and maybe you've taken this and it meant something to you. Not an emotional, but a spiritual. Something spiritual happened in your life. Maybe you've taken it and your church had first Sunday and you took it and you really knew never what it meant. Or maybe you take it for years and years and years and years and you're just like, I just don't get it. See, we don't have a closed communion here. Mm -mm. We have a close, close communion. What does that mean? It means if you're close to Jesus, if you're in a relationship with him, we invite you to take the Lord's Supper. Communion isn't off limit to you if you're not a member here. Maybe you come here every now and then, or maybe you've never darkened the days of the church because you won't even give Jesus a chance. It's not about a religion. It's about a relationship with the person of Jesus. See, the Lord's Supper, the Bible tells us communion is to remember Jesus. You remember Jesus. You can't remember somebody that you don't know personally. You just can't. The cracker and the juice, it means God brought you out of your past. He freed you. He redeemed you. He paid the price for you. And he wants you to be part of the family. Maybe you're here today and you're like, man, I'm just here for the food trucks and for these eggs. But I'm telling you here, 
Jesus has you here because he wants to meet with you today. As we get ready to wrap up, I invite you just to close your eyes. And we're going to just spend just a few moments with the Lord and ask you to close your eyes just so we're not a distraction to the persons behind you or beside you. All you have to do is receive it. That's what the disciples did. They didn't earn it. We didn't earn it. We have to receive the free gift of salvation. If you openly declare that Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you will be saved. And maybe that's you here today. You say, Rob, that's me. I've never prayed and given my life to Jesus. I've never done that. I played the game of church, I've checked the boxes, but I've never been delivered from my past and given a new life. And if that's you, I wanna help you today, I really do. I'm not gonna embarrass you, I'm not gonna call you out. This is between you and God, that's it. If that's you, you say, Rob, that's me, I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. I've never prayed and asked Jesus to come forgive me of my sin and trust him with my whole heart. But if that's you, you say, Rob, I wanna do that right now. I invite you to say a prayer. There's nothing magical about this prayer. It's the attitude of the heart. Romans 10, 10 says this, for if you believe in your heart, you'll be made right with God. And by openly declaring your faith, you will be saved. So with every head bowed, every back closed. If you're in this room, you're saying, Rob, I'm ready to give my life to Jesus, then repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all the bad things I've done. I believe in you, Jesus that you died for me, you rose to rescue me today. In the best way that I know how, I turn my back on my old life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you just said that prayer for the very first time and you meant it 100%, You just gave your life to Christ. I'm not gonna embarrass you. I'm not gonna call you out, but I I invite you to look up at me. If you're looking up at me, you're saying, I gave my life to Christ. On the count of three, one, two, three. If you're looking up at me, okay, I see you. Awesome. Did you give your life to Christ? Stay with me, okay? That's cool. That's amazing. Okay, I see you. I see you back there. Did you give your life to Christ today? That's awesome. Did you give your life to Christ today? Praise God. That's awesome. Did you give your life to Christ today? That's amazing. What about you? How about you? Praise God, man. Praise God. Here's what I invite you to do. In your seat back pocket, there's a blue card. Can you grab that card for me? Just grab that card. Here's what I want you to do. We're not going to sell you anything. We're not going to do anything. I'm, I'm just going to call you tomorrow. Me or somebody else from our staff. We want to say congratulations. We want to help you find and follow Jesus. You found Jesus today. I want you to put your name and your number. Check the box. I gave my life to Christ. Can you grab that card? Thank you. Go ahead and fill that out. That's awesome. You can leave the card on your seat when we go out for all the fun. But maybe for some of you, you've never followed in believer's baptism. You were saved a long time ago, but you've never said yes to believer's baptism. What better Sunday than Easter Sunday to celebrate baptism? It's a picture of what Jesus did on the cross. If that's you and you'd like to be baptized, we'd like to help you with that. I invite you to grab that blue card and fill it out. You can leave it on the seat back pocket. 
God, thank you for moving in our service today. God, we love you. As we get ready to close out with all eyes on me, I invite you to grab the elements for the Lord's Supper. And for some of you, this will be for the very first time because you just entered into a relationship with Jesus. So I invite you to grab the Lord's Supper. And let me give you just a few instructions. I want to read just two verses, say one thing, and then we're going to spend a moment talking about the bread. And you'll take the bread. Then we'll go into the juice, and then we'll talk about it, and then you'll take the juice. And we'll do this as a family. 1 Corinthians 11 says this, For I pass on to you what I receive from the Lord himself. On the night when I was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to it. And then he broke it. Right here, Jesus had something on his mind. He knew what was ahead. He knew he was going to be betrayed and broken, just like this bread was. Look at the next part of the passage. It says, Then he took the bread, broke it into pieces. He said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you'll get the bread out. Take the bread and spend just a moment in remembrance of what Jesus' sacrifice meant. Verse 25 says, In the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat the bread and drink the cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. He took the cup of wine, which represents his blood. His blood that was poured out on the cross for you, for me, for our sins. And when you're in a relationship with Jesus, you're not defined by your past. You're forgiven. And you keep your eyes on Jesus. So take the juice. Do this in remembrance of him. Father God, I just pray, I thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the ones in this room that have accepted you for the very first time. God, what a beautiful picture it is. There's a party in heaven that's celebrating. Praise God. God, thank you for what we're about to do next and have fun and make memories with our families. All God's people said.